Hey friends and welcome back to another video. My name is Emma LaFave and today we're going to be painting this really cute Valentine's Day illustration. So let's get started. Okay, so today I'm going to be painting a little Valentine's Day inspired illustration. And for my paper, I'm going to be testing out this Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press Heavy Paper that they sent me. It's by Legion Paper. It is 100% cotton watercolor paper. The reason why it's called heavy is because it's 600 GSM, um, 300 pounds, which means it's super thick. Now, I haven't worked on a paper this heavy before. Um, I don't know if actually working on the surface is going to be much different. Uh, this is a cold pressed watercolor block, so the pages are all glued together. So I can't really show you how thick it is. I don't know if you can see that. It's pretty thick. Um, so I'm guessing this would be really great for like landscapes, kind of things that would, or paintings that would warp your paper easily where you use a lot of water. Having a thicker paper just helps keep it flatter and especially being in a block. Um, but I'm not gonna be using it for that today. I'm just gonna test it out by painting a Valentine's Day illustration. Um, I was thinking we could do like an envelope with some hearts bursting out, something easy and fun to do that I haven't done yet. So that's what we're gonna do today. And I'm going to be painting with my Winsor Newton Professional watercolors. I have my Emma Lefebvre craft and brushes, my water, my paper towel, and a pencil and an eraser and a ruler because I don't want to freehand this <laughs> because I just, I, I don't know, I just feel like it wouldn't go well today. So I'm going to start by making my envelope. I'm going to make it about six inches. I'm working on a big piece. This is a um, nine by 12. So if you're working on like a half sheet, which I usually do, um, I would just make it smaller, make it any dimension you want and freehand it if you want. But I'm just going to be doing six inches. So six then I'm going to go up about five, no, four. Let's do four inches high. feel like, should I make it lower? No, this, this should be good. Four inches high. Okay, and then I'm just going to connect them at the top. Okay. And then I'm going to go about halfway, and I'm just going to find the middle again, so three here, and I'm just going to make about an inch long flap here and I'm going to have it coming down just above the corner so I don't want to meet the line at the corner just above the corner like a centimeter you can always measure it if you want like about that okay and then I'm going to have another line going up here like so and like this so again about like a centimeter like that and then we're gonna have the flap kind of opening here okay so again I want to find the center here just make sure it's around the same so it's like about three because I want the point or the opening to be similar, similar width and all that stuff. So I'm just going to I'm, I'm not even sure if you're going to see the open flap yet in this drawing. Is that that's about right? I think we will curve the top of it. Yeah, my freehand skills are not great today, <laughs> but it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just a fun little illustration. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that. Okay, you can always make it darker if you'd like. And then I was thinking we could do, I'm actually going to erase this line and this at the top, not completely, just making it lighter because I want to do some hearts coming out. Um... I was thinking maybe we can do some like transparent hearts. So I want to think of a color scheme, obviously Valentine's Day. I'm thinking pink of doing the envelope pink and then doing some layering of some hearts coming out like they're they're transparent. So I have to think of the color of the hearts that I'm going to be laying over layering over pink that won't um, make it look like when the two colors are layering on top of each other, they won't look odd. So I'll come to that in a bit. Let's 
play around with the envelope first and paint that. I'm thinking like a pink because, you know, Valentine's Day. I'm just going to mix whatever's in here. <laughs> and I actually kind of want to make it not dull, but just a little bit toned down. Just a little bit. So I'm going to actually add a little bit of green to it just to dull it a bit. I don't want it super vibrant. I want more of like a dusty pink. Okay, and I'm just gonna dip my brush in my water with all that pigment on there and I'm just gonna start painting the whole envelope pink. Just a nice light wash of pink. The whole thing. And I just keep adding more water to my brush just to make sure that it's nice and light. Okay, this is going to be a fairly easy tutorial. But this could be a really cute Valentine's Day card too. I just wanted to do it on this paper so I could test it out. And I'm thinking the opening, like the inside, I'm going to make it, I'm going to keep it this light and then we're going to do another layer on the outside here just to make it a little bit darker, just to give it a bit of a difference, just to show that the opening is a bit different than the outside. You know how those envelopes have those inside kind of sleeves where they're a different color. So I'm going to have the inside this color and then the outside will just intensify in another layer once it's dry. We're just going to lay down this first layer. Like so. And let me know in the comments below what you think about Valentine's Day. I personally love Valentine's Day just because, and it's not like for reasons of, <laughs> don't tell my husband. It's not because like my husband goes all out or does anything crazy or wonderful. Like, I mean, he's, he's wonderful. Don't get me wrong. But that's not why. I've always just loved it because, one, February is awful. It's just such a cold, dreary month. And I just find something like a holiday that's just so bright and cheery and full of love is just such a upbeat thing to have during this month. And I just love it. And also, when I would teach kindergarten, I loved Valentine's Day. Giving out all the little cards and having the candies. And you get, like, cute little Valentines from your students. Loved it. So I love Valentine's Day. And it's a way to show my kids I love them, my husband. It's just fun. I mean, yes, you can do it every day. It's a commercial holiday, but I enjoy it. So let me know in the comments below if you enjoy it too. Okay, so we're going to let this dry and then we'll come right back. Okay, so now we are done that first layer. We're going to go over this whole part with another layer of this dusty pink just to make it a bit darker so the inside looks a bit lighter. Um, so something I'm noticing about this paper is that it dries pretty fast. I don't think it's my office. Um, it's just, it just seems to not stay wet as long as some other cotton papers that I've used. There's that. And then also it's a lot smoother than other cold press papers that I've used before. So I don't love that because I do love like the toothy texture. Um, sometimes like a bit of texture can be a little bit hard to work on. Um, but I actually like it. I just feel like it, the color just soaks in a bit better. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Um, but I feel like this would be really great paper if you were doing some like watercolor lettering on it because it is cold press. It is 100% cotton, so it's good quality. Um, and it's nice and smooth, so it actually would be pretty pretty good to do some lettering on. So maybe we'll test that. Once the illustration's done, we can write like a little love message or something. So I'm just going to continue to darken this. I usually don't work this big. Like on, I never usually work on a full sheet of paper. <laughs> this is out of the norm for me and I don't necessarily recommend it if you're using cotton paper and you want to save it because it's expensive. I almost always cut my cotton paper into quarters just so I don't, in my mind, I feel like sometimes I'm, just in case it doesn't work out, I don't waste the paper. But I always say you're never wasting, you're always learning something, but if you're painting a bunch of pieces for someone and you want them to turn out or you don't want to run out of paper, I always like making them a bit smaller just so you feel like you're not wasting it. Okay, 
So there we go. Um, and then I'm gonna again let it dry because I'm gonna do a little bit of shading on this just to make it stand out just a bit. Okay, so now that it's dry, we're gonna shade this area a bit because this bottom flap, when it is gone over top of these two flaps, it might create a bit of a shadow and it just doesn't look as flat. Um, another thing I'm noticing with this paper, I feel like, like it dries okay, but it's not as even. You see that? Like I've done a pretty decent job at trying to keep it even, but I feel like it's splotchy in some areas. I'm not that fond of it, so I'm just, just keeping it real here. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a bit more of the same color and I'm gonna lay it here. This is also a good test to see how this paper takes layering. Cause so far I feel like I'm getting, sorry, I'm gonna wash off my brush, dry it on my paper towel, and I'm just gonna touch the edge here to blend it out. Um, but I feel like I'm getting these weird little marks. It almost looks like the paper starting to pill. It's weird, I don't know. Don't think I love it. See how that just kind of helps give it a bit more dimension, just a little bit more depth to it. I'm just going to add a bit more color. Okay, so it doesn't look as flat. Okay, that's a little intense. So I'm going to wash off my brush. I'm going to dry it on my paper towel and I'm just going to blend it out a bit more. And you just blend it all the way to the edge just so there's not like a harsh line there. Okay, let's do it to the other side. It's actually a little more than tense than I wanted, but it's okay, it's okay. Again, wash and dry off your brush and just blend it out. All right, like that. That one's a little bit lighter. I feel like that might be a bit better. I wonder if I should lift this up a bit. Lift up some of this color. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Hold on. I think I'm gonna do this side a bit again. Well, it lifts color pretty decently, just because I don't want it to be too intense of a line, because I still want the bottom flap to look like it's part of the same envelope. I don't want them to be two different colors. I just wanted a bit of a shadow. Wash it off, dry, blend it out. There we go. There we go. Just a little, little difference. I feel like it's changed the color of the envelope a little bit. So I might actually have to do this one too. So I'm gonna wait for these two <laughs> to dry and then I'm just gonna shade down here a bit, I think. Okay, that's dry. So it is a bit different of a color. So I'm just gonna add this color to the bottom here, just to make it the same color. Wash off my brush and then just blend it out. Just a slight difference. like that. Okay, I think we're good. Yeah, now we're good. Um, and now we're going to do some of the hearts coming out. Okay, so whenever you're doing some wet on dry, um, you always want to make sure that the base is dry. So don't paint unless the base is dry or any areas that you're touching, just make sure they're not wet. Okay, because we're going to be doing some layering. Um, so let's pick some colors that will layer nicely over pink. And that would be, so if we took a look at our color wheel here, let's pretend pink is red. Okay, so any of these colors that are kind of sitting next to pink or red on the color wheel, if you layer over top of them, they will layer nicely, meaning it won't be muddy brown. Okay, so if you put yellow over pink or red, you'll get kind of like an orange. Any of the primary colors you can mix it with. The one color that you want to avoid is mixing or layering over top its contrasting color. So I'm not going to do any green hearts because if I put a green heart over pink or red, it's going to turn 
um, brown. And just because we have even the slightest bit of pink here, like this isn't a dark pink, it wouldn't make too, too much of a difference. Um, I just want to try to avoid using a green just because I want to make this like, um, as not as vibrant, but just not as muddy as it could look. So I want to mix it with colors that will mix well. So I can mix it with some purples or blues or orange or yellow. Um, and I could, even I did want to do a green, I could do more of a blue green because that would make kind of like a purpley color. So let's just play around, um, pick a color palette that you'd like to do. I feel like I'm going to go, should I go purples and blues or should I go yellows and oranges? I feel like we should go purples and blues and like darker pink. So let's, let's do that. Okay. So I have all these pinks in my palettes here and I have some blues. Let's start by just picking a pink. And the goal is to not have like a super dark um, color. You want it slightly transparent. So not of dark value of the color. And I'm just doing a heart that's like coming out. That's why I'm not doing the whole thing. Okay, you want to work with not light values, but slightly lighter, watered down versions of the colors. Because if they're too opaque, if they're too dark, you won't be able to see the layers underneath. Okay, so there's one heart. Let's do a purple. We can mix it with a blue even. Okay, and I'm going to make sure that this heart is not touching that heart because we're going to have a heart in between that is layering over top of them so they look like they're transparent hearts. And this is just a really good layering um, practice technique while making a really cute Valentine's Day picture. This would make a really cute card. And also I am painting larger hearts towards the bottom and as they go out they'll be, they'll go lighter, or not lighter, smaller and smaller. Okay, there's that. Let's grab maybe like another more bluish one. They don't have to be perfect hearts. They can have a bit of a curve to them. They can be whatever you want them to be. Just have fun and be creative with it. That's, that is the goal of this painting. Let's grab another pink. Oh, let's do just my permanent rose. Okay, so that's a bit darker than I want. I'm just going to wash off my brush and just use the water from my brush to make it a bit lighter. Okay, and see how none of these are touching, right? Okay, so let's start with letting these dry and then we'll start layering just to kind of get a feel of what it's going to look like. Um, and then we'll continue with more hearts. Okay, so now our hearts are dry, we're gonna layer some over top. Now again, we need to consider colors when we're layering. Because we went the blue-purple route, we need to make sure that we're not layering any of these colors, they're contrasting colors over top. So I'm gonna stick with blues and purples just because I feel like when you work with an analogous palette, which are three or four colors that sit next to each other on the color wheel, so like red or pink, red, purple, 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 blue, you could even add blue in there, um, it just, gives it, it just makes it look really nice and cohesive and it just kind of goes well together. Um, but if you did want to add other colors in there from the other side, you could add some oranges and yellows, but here's what you have to consider. Orange is blues contrasting color. If you layer an orange heart over top of this blue, it's going to turn brown. The layer is going to be brown over top. If you layer a yellow over top of this purple heart, it is going to turn brown again. So again, you want to layer colors, being mindful of it, of what's going to layer well together. So that's why I'm going to stick with the purples and the pinks and the blues, um, just because I think it will look a little bit better. So I'm going to grab some turquoise here. And again, we're working a little bit lighter. OK, 
Okay, and see, I'm just doing a light wash. See that layer? It turns it a different color. This is also known as kind of glazing, right? You're layering a transparent color on top of another and it changes the color that's underneath. See that? Okay, and we're just gonna continue with some more layers. Now again, if I put a heart here, I'm not gonna put another heart layering over top of this one because it's already wet, it's still wet. I can't layer over top of it without it bleeding into the, each other. So I'm just gonna be mindful when I'm layering another heart that it's not touching the wet one. We have to wait for it to dry before we do another layer. Let's make that a different pink. But try and keep it fairly, ugh, why am I messing up this shape of this heart? Try and keep it fairly light, just so you can also see the colors underneath, right? go cute okay let's do a different purpley color we can go this way part of me thinks that maybe the yellow root would have gone really nicely too the yellow and reds and oranges but that's something we can try another time. Oh, why is my brush so dry? Yeah, like I said, I feel like this paper dries so fast. It's odd. Yeah, see, some of the, when it's wet at least, it doesn't look like it's going to dry even. But then it, it seems to be drying pretty even, but it's throwing me off a little bit, this paper. that maybe this blue let's see let's do another pink it's a bit dark And as the hearts start coming out, I'm going to start like um, angling them out. Okay. Um, let's lay down a couple more initial hearts that we can start layering over once they're dry. And then you're just going to continue to place these hearts all around, just making sure that the wet ones are not touching each other and you'll wait for them to dry and then do a second layer. Feel free to paint as many hearts as you'd like. You can do lots, you can do a little bit. I like to make them smaller as they are further away from the envelope. So the bigger ones coming right from inside and then they gradually get smaller. And I like doing lots. I just think it looks really cool. But again, just be creative and do it however you'd like. Okay, and then once your hearts, you feel like the hearts are done, I just wanna do like a little embellishment kind of thing on the envelope, just like little lines or something. Um, and then maybe on the inner corner, just so it doesn't seem like it's super lost. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab some pink and my size two brush, and I'm just gonna do these little lines like this. because I think that looks cute. <laughs> Actually, let's do it up here too. On the parts that you would see. Mm. 
And I wonder if because those hearts are transparent, if I just wash this off so it's really light and just kind of go behind. So it looks like they're back there. They're just a bit lighter because they're behind the hearts. Or does that look weird? I think it needs to be a bit lighter. I think that's too dark. I'm just gonna mop it up a little bit. There. Just like they're very faint. Okay, and then the other side. Maybe go across. like that. Okay. And I think that's good. That's such a cute little envelope. Okay. And now let's test out just because this is smoother paper. Let's test out how it does with writing. So maybe let's just write the word love. I'm going to write love with my pink and my size two brush in kind of like a calligraphy form. Okay, it is a lot easier to do calligraphy on just because it's so smooth. This paper, still not great at it. <laughs> it's not great writing, but it's fine. Love. Like that. Love. And there we go. There is our cute Valentine's Day envelope. So I just wanted to show you guys quickly a smaller version of this using a different color palette. I really like the idea of using an analogous palette, so three or four colors that sit next to each other on the color wheel. They mix well and they look really pretty together, um, but this is just another way you can go with it. So give it a try, make someone you love a card, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on all my other platforms for tons more content. Have a great day. Bye.